you know, some people have said you've been peculiarly quiet in yeah. these couple of, well, I guess over the last two years almost. Why is that the case? And one of the worst things I think can happen is to be perceived as a liar. And um, if I don't have the influence over the direction of the party, I can't be the main speaker and voice of the party because I don't have that influence to guarantee that the things that I'm proposing will be done. So if I'm out there saying we're going to paint the country blue, we're going to paint the country blue, and I don't have any influence over the paint that we choose, then there's a high probability that the country will be pink mm. and um, I will be perceived a liar. Mm. So because I have much less influence now than I had under Peter Phillips or under Portia Simpson, um, I don't find it um, comfortable to be a major announcer of my opinions because I have very little influence in the directions of the party now. And if you're unsuccessful this time around, are you cut getting away from, or are you stepping out of representational well, politics? It's not that easy to step away. You know? There's also a sickness that most politicians have to believe that they are the ones best able to do it. And um, in spite of the few that may have negative opinions, especially in the in the decision-making chairs, there are many who have committed themselves to me in the public. Um, there are many who have supported my, my journey in the public and many who believe that there's a high probability that if I am successful to gain power um, in any real way, that I'll be able to change some things. So I've always drawn on those who believe, which I believe are much more. Um, I, I was elated. I just came back on the road. Um, I went to St. Thomas. The response was was mind boggling um, from the audience, and, and I went to East Rural. East Rural, and, and, and yeah, yeah. And people yeah. were very happy and to Patrick see you. Patrick King, and yes. Um, yeah, still have a spring in hand from it. So, so those people also um, deserve my consideration. But um, you you have to always consider. So you're always infected yes. with yeah. this it, spirit it, it, it's of like wanting to represent people. It's like people. a drug. You want to, and you think you can. You think that you can do it better than most people. And um, you think you can change it. Most people who think I should be in charge of all the three million people have that innate craziness that I, I'm, I'm the one best able to do it. It's not easy to just step away from something that I've been doing this for 19 years at the forefront of it. Ultimately, do you want to become Prime Minister of Jamaica one day? Yes, I've never been shy on, in saying that. Um, I would love to have the opportunity um, to be the plane because um, everybody has things that they can do on their own. You can be a bicycle bus by yourself without power. If you become a member of parliament or a cabinet person, you can be a bus. And if you become the prime minister, you can be a plane. So if you're going to move people quickly, why not be a plane? So I've always wanted that opportunity that I am the chief decision maker of where we go. But if I get the opportunity to decide for education or health or housing or whatever, I'll be able to do more. So I've, for example, I've always been having camps for inner city children when I was not in power, 20, 25, 30 from my own resources, when I was MP 400, that's what politics gives. And if I was prime minister, it would be a policy that all schools must have a summer program. So therefore, the, 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 the role of the prime minister, I really believe that if I had an opportunity, I could make some serious changes.